Hello, this is Miss Nave, and I'm here to teach you how to make bar graphs in the Macintosh Numbers program. We've spent the last few days talking about various types of graphs, but we're going to focus on bar graphs today. So think about what we've learned about bar graphs. We know that for simple bar graphs, we take one set of data that we can use to compare amongst each other. So if we look at all of our data sets that we've collected in class, I want you to think about which of these data sets might best be represented through a simple bar graph. There's actually quite a few choices, but there might be some better represented than others. So you need to put some thought into that and think about what we've been talking about and what we've learned. So once you've chosen the set of data that you're ready to graph, you come into this data sheet and you select and highlight the set of data that you want to graph. I'm going to graph the types of pets that people in our class have. So I've selected that data. I'm now going to go into the new sheet that we just created. And when I open that new sheet, well, whoops, I need to uh, copy that data. So let me do that again. So I select it and I copy it. All right, now I go into that new sheet, and you'll notice that we've got a small spreadsheet set up. Make sure that you click in that top left uh, box that's white, just as I've demonstrated there. And you'll notice that it opens the true spreadsheet with the columns and the rows. Once I've clicked there, I'm, I need to paste my data that I've copied from the previous sheet. So I right click and paste. And you'll notice that my data pops up. You'll also see that this spreadsheet is still quite small, so in order to enlarge it, I grab that bottom right hand corner where it's got a gray tab, and I just click and pull, and that enlarges my spreadsheet. In order for us to work in the numbers program and communicate that we want to graph a section of or a selection of data, I must have it highlighted. And you'll notice that my data is still highlighted here. When your data is highlighted, you're ready to communicate to the program that this is the data we want to graph. So we come under this icon that's called Charts. And if you pull that down, you'll see all the different charts that you can choose to create. So we've got a simple vertical bar graph. We've got a stacked vertical bar graph. We've got a simple horizontal bar graph, a stacked horizontal bar graph, a number line, a circle graph, a scatter plot, and then we've got some bar graphs where a line runs through it. But since we're focusing on a simple bar graph today, I'm going to come back up to these top portions. We can either choose to make a vertical bar graph or a horizontal bar graph. You'll notice that we also can choose between stacked. But I want you to think for a moment right now why this data selection could not be represented through a stacked bar graph. Think about what we've been talking about in class. Take a moment to come up with an answer mentally of why a stacked bar graph will not work with this set of data that I've highlighted. Okay, moving right along, we're going to come back to where the direction that we're heading. We need to create a simple bar graph you can choose either vertical bars or horizontal bars. It's your preference. I tend to like vertical bar graphs better because they're easier for me to read. So I'm going to select a simple vertical bar graph. And as I click on that, it automatically creates a graph for me based on the selection that I had highlighted. I'm just dragging it up near my data set so that I can actually read it a little bit clearer. You'll notice that this box pops up. This is actually what we call the inspector tools. And anytime that disappears, you'll notice that there's an inspector icon up here. So you can always click on that to get back into it. As I click on my graph once, you'll notice that all of these things come alive again. So often you have to click on your graph to get it to work. So there's a couple things about this graph that are missing. We know from our previous year in school that all graphs need to have certain things. One thing that every graph needs to have is a proper title. And if you look at the title that's been given to this graph, Chart 2, does that tell us much? Not really. So we need to rename that title. 
So if I double click on that, it selects it. And we know that a good title will tell our reader exactly what they're going to find out about in our graph. So a title might be what types of pets do we have? Okay. And then if I come down into my graph, I see that on my x-axis I have all the types of pets. Well, actually I don't. Notice there's only five of them listed. And if we look at our data table, there's actually nine. So that tells me that our graph was created quite small and we need to stretch it out. So click on your graph to get those outline squares. Grab onto the right middle square and drag it out until you can see all the animals. Okay, now you should see all nine animals. Okay, let's notice also that we've got this legend here. Do we need legends for bar graphs? No, absolutely not. So if I come into my inspector tools, you'll notice that in the chart section, it says show legend and that's checked. If I unclick it, watch what happens at my graph. It's gone. Okay, and now looking a little bit more closely at my graph, I notice that it's missing a few other things. We know that titles are extremely important, but you should also remember that both X and the Y axis should be labeled. So if I come back into my inspector tool and I click on the axis option, you'll notice that I can change some things about my Y axis and I can change some things about my X axis. Let's go into my x-axis options first. If I need to name my x-axis with a little bit more clear title, I'm going to click on show title. And you'll notice that a category title pops up. So if I double click on that, it allows me to be a little bit more specific with my name, naming. Since this axis shows all the types of pets that we might have, I'm gonna label that axis pets. Now let's go look at our y-axis we see that there's a whole bunch of numbers. What do those numbers represent? If you don't remember, you can always look back at your data table. That will help you and give you some information. We notice that, that those numbers tell us the number of people. So I can go into my y-axis options and again hit show title. And up pops value title. Double click and we are going to write number of people. So now we have both axes labeled. I want you to take a closer look at this graph and notice the intervals. The intervals are counting by what number? You guessed it, they're counting by 2.5. Is that a common interval to see in many graphs? Not really, decimals often make it a little bit hard for us to read the size of bars. So you're gonna notice that our largest value is 10. What could we count by to get to tens? We could either count by ones, by twos, or by fives. So the next thing you need to ask yourself is if I'm gonna count by ones to get to 10, how many of these steps will I need to have to count by ones? Or if I'm going to count by fives, how many steps will I need to have to get to 10? I hope you get my point but I think it's often easiest to count by ones. And since our largest value is a 10, I'm going to come over here into my inspector tools and you're gonna see something called steps. That's referring to these horizontal steps that you see right here. It automatically defaults at four. You can change that though. Since I wanna count by ones and I have a total value of 10, I need 10 steps. And as I change my steps, notice that my intervals in my graph change. Okay, so now at this point I'm going to take a look at my graph. I'm going to notice that I have my x-axis labeled, my y-axis labeled, I've got a title, my intervals seem pretty reasonable. Is there anything else I'm missing from my graph? Not that I can think of. So at this point I'm satisfied with where I've gone and I'm going to let you give it a shot now. Good luck and if you have any questions, ask your teacher.